Good evening, gang. How y'all doing tonight? Today is Sunday, April the 5th of the year 2020. We're here to do some Bible study. So go ahead, gang, grab your Bible, grab yourself something to drink, and we'll get started here this evening. All right. All right. Good to see everybody. How y'all doing? Y'all dealing with uh, being stuck inside? You realize you don't have to be stuck inside, right? No matter where you live in the country, there's got to be somewhere that you can go that's away from other people that you can go wander around out in the woods or something so that you're not cooped up in that house all the time with that idiot box going to 24 hours a day. Whew. I don't know how anybody can do that. Anyway, we're going to continue our study through Leviticus this evening. We'll be starting on chapter 9. Okay? So go ahead and get yourself settled in there. Grab yourself something to drink. Always need something to drink when we do our Bible study, huh? All right. So, what do you say? Let's get started. Okay. Uh, Leviticus. Chapter 9. All right, let's get the old glasses on, see if I can keep them hitting the mic while I put these on. All right. Hey, I think that we found some glasses. I can actually see the pages and the writing on the pages, so that's good. Okay. If you're not ready, it's all right. No stress. Just shut the video off. Join us when you're ready, okay? We'll be right in... We'll be waiting right here where you left us, okay? Video has been an awesome thing, isn't it? Love it. Love video. All right, let me see if I can get rid of this cord. Okay. Leviticus, chapter 9. Let me clear the pipes out real quick. <coughs> okay. And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. Bump of the mic. Verse 4. Also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings, to sacrifice before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil for today, the Lord will appear unto you. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar, and offer thy sin offering, and thy burnt offering, and make an atonement for thyself and for the people, and offer the offering of the people. And make an atonement for them, as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went unto the altar, and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him, and he dipped his finger in the blood, and put it upon the horns of the altar, and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. But the fat, and the kidneys, and the caul above the liver of the sin offering, he burnt upon the altar, as the Lord commanded Moses." And the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the camp. And he slew the burnt offering 
And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled round about upon the altar. And they presented the burnt offering unto him, with the pieces thereof, and the head, and he burnt them upon the altar. And he did wash the inwards and the legs, and burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offerings, and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people, and slew it, and offered it for sin as the first. And he brought the burnt offering, and offered it according to the manner. And he brought the meat offering, and took a handful thereof, and burnt it upon the altar, beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. And he slew also the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people and Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of the bullock and of the ram, the rump, and that which covereth the inwards, and the kidneys, and the call above the liver. And they put the fat upon the breasts, and he burnt the fat upward upon the altar. And the breasts and the right shoulder Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord, as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people, and blessed them, and came down from offering of the sin offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation, and came out, and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord, and, the consum and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which, when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Chapter 10 And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And they went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Oops, I guess that was a mistake. Verse 3, Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it, that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace, and Moses called Mishael and Elizaphan, the sons of Uzziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. And I'm sorry, so they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses has said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, Bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. 
And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, that were left, Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is do thy due, and thy son's due, of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire. For so I am commanded. And the wave breast and heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee, for they be thy due, and thy sons due, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heave shoulder and the wave breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be thine and thy sons with thee by a statute forever as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering and behold, it was burnt, and he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy, and God hath given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord? Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content. Chapter 11 And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven foot, and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divineth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Verse 8, Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcass in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls 
They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind and the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind and the little owl and the cormorant, cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gyre eagle, and the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lapwing, after the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all fours, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth up all fours, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creature creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean unto, until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof, and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all fours, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean unto the even. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the even. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, raiment or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, wherein to any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down. For they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit, wherein there is plenty of water, shall be clean. But that which toucheth the carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be 
unclean unto you. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And every creeping thing shall thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all fours, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourself abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourself unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beasts and the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Chapter 12 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days, she shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying threescore and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon, or a turtle dove, for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. Who shall offer it before the Lord, and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the, tish, from the issue of her blood? This is the law for her that hath borne a male or a female. And if she bear not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering, and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, but she shall be clean. Chapter 13 And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair of the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh. It is a plague of leprosy, and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in the sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him 
the seventh day, and, behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. And the priest shall look on him again the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his clean cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest sees that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and, behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean, that hath the plague, it is all turned white, he is clean. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh, and pronounce him to be unclean, for... The raw flesh is unclean, it is a leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and, behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague, he is clean. If the flesh also in which, even in the skin thereof, was a boil, and is healed, and in the place of the boil there be white rising, or a bright spot, white, and somewhat reddish, and it be shewed to the priest. And if, when the priest seeth it, behold, it be in sight lower than the skin, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boil. But if the priests look on it, and, behold, there be no white hair therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spots stay in his place, and spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof, there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white, and it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day. And if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. 
And if the bright spot stay in its place, and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and, behold, it be not in the sight, in sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut him that hath the plague of the skull seven days. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the plague, and behold, if the skull spread not, and there be in it no yellow hair, and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven, but the scowl shall he not shave, and the priest shall shut him that hath the skull seven days more. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull, and behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor be in sight deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for yellow hair. He is unclean. But if the skull be in his sight at a stray, at a stay, and that there is black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed. He is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look, and, behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth on the skin, he is clean. And, it, and the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the parts of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet is he clean? And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, that is, a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising, my fingers don't want to work, if the rising of the sore be white reddish in the bald head, or in his bald forehead, as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh. He is leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean! Unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his habitation be. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the warp, or wolf, of linen, or of woolen, whether in a skin, or in anything made of skin. And if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the skin, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is a plague of leprosy, and shall be shewed unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague, and shut up, it that hath the plague 
seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day, if the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in a skin, or in any work that is made of skin. The plague is a fretting leprosy, it is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or in anything of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest shall look, and, behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague, after that it is washed, and, behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look, and behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. And the garment, either warp or woof, or whatsoever thing of skin it be, which thou shalt wash, if the plague be departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and shall be clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof, or anything of skins, to pronounce it clean, or to pronounce it unclean. And I think we're going to stop right there on chapter 14. And we'll pick up there on Wednesday, okay? Wow, they had some pretty stringent rules for dealing with leprosy, huh? I wonder what they have they would deal with uh, COVID-19. Hmm, interesting, huh? Interesting. Well, this plague, it's... uh man-made, but God allowed it. So it's judgment. Be aware it is judgment. Also be aware that it's a weapon. And being that it's a weapon, we don't know what it's going to do. So all of these big professors and PhD scientists, doctors, and every talking head government official have no clue of what this thing is really going to do. It could change. It could mutate. It could turn into something completely different. Who knows? It's a weapon. Who knows what it's going to do? They ain't never lit one of these off before, so who knows what it's going to do? So watch out. Don't be getting into no lines that offer vaccines. Yeah. Hey, check out. You ready for this? Quantum Dot. ID 2020. These are all little things that Bill Gates has got in the works to mark us. Look it up. Look it up. And don't stand in line for any vaccines. All right, gang. I think that's all I got for tonight. Um, I hope you, I, I pray that each and every one of you are doing okay, self quarantining. Staying at home. You know, we could all be rebellious. We can all go do rebellious things. We can all go and hang out anywhere we want to or go to a church ceremony or a concert or whatever it is that you want to do. But when your family comes down with this disease, the only one to blame is you because you shouldn't have been there. There's a lot of folks that are saying that this disease ain't real. 
I think it's real. I think it's very real, and I think that it is a man-made weapon, and I think that they unleashed it on the people and on certain governments that they are now fighting. Get ready, because we're headed into a world war. But enough of what I think. What I think, it don't matter. All right? Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. Thank you, thank you each and every one of you for joining me this evening. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good evening. God bless you all. And take care. All right? All right. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks for being here with me. Talk to y'all later. Bye.